Once you know how to render your designs, you can export those as images and use those to create more advanced graphics. To get started, let's change our work environment to render. Before we get too far, let's change our settings to make sure that we are able to see shadows and reflections in our objects. Make sure limit effects to optimize performance is unchecked. As you can see, I've already added materials and appearances to my model. However, in the render work environment, you can select appearance in the toolbar and add a range of appearances to either a whole body or component or individual faces for more detailed parts. If I don't know exactly where my material is that I'm looking for, I can use this convenient search bar to search for glass, find my appearance, and drag it right onto my body or component. If the appearance isn't exactly the way you'd like, you can double click it, change the color and other visual properties to make it look exactly the way you'd like. A whole library of appearances have come preloaded. However, some you have to manually download. So click this little arrow, wait a second, and it will now be available for you to apply to your component. The next tool in the render setup is scene settings. The first option to change is the brightness. It starts at 1000 by default. Next is position. Once you select the crosshairs, you can adjust the rotation of the light and the ground scale. I'm going to come back to this quite frequently as I modify my environment settings. The background can either be a solid color or an environment. Environments won't appear unless you adjust your environment library. Select the swatch to adjust your color. This is where you might want to think about what you intend on using this render for. If you plan on overlaying text, choose a color that allow that text to stand out without sacrificing the visibility of your object. Adjust your camera settings so that way your object appears in its normal perspective. If you change the focal length, it'll appear that you are very close to your object or further away. 90 millimeters usually seems to be just about right and the default exposure typically works. If you select depth of field, what will happen is the background will start to become blurry because it has a shorter depth of field and focus. Moving to the environment library, you can see there are different light sources, but then also surroundings that you can load for your render. Drag and drop each environment onto your background to see how it'll affect the appearances that you apply to your model. This is when I go back to settings to change the position of my lighting. What I look for is how the reflections and the highlights of this particular light source showcase the details and features of my model. Now let's try to apply one of the 3D landscapes to the environment. You'll notice not much happens. However, you can see the reflection of the landscape in the glass of the visor. To actually see the background, you have to go back to environment library and change the background from color to background. Now you can see the 3D landscape all the way around my model. Seeing that the light source in the environment actually reflects in the object, I'm going to use this as I set up my render. The next setup tool is applying decals. The PNG image works best, but you can actually apply a flat image over a 3D surface. This works great for logos and labels. Texture map controls are a little bit more advanced, which allows you to change the orientation and the mapping of surface textures. We won't be using in-canvas render too often, but if you select it, the render will actually be taking place locally on your device. And you can see how the computer is applying all the information, but it will take quite a while. It will give you a nice little preview of what your final rendering will actually look like. When you stop it, make sure you don't just pause the timeline, but actually go up to the toolbar and hit stop in canvas render. You can also change your in canvas render settings, as well as save exactly what you see before you actually render it. Now the next part, is an in-cloud rendering. Select the teapot, and when choosing your format, think about what you are intend on using your image or your rendering for. If you intend on using it for a video, select the video and choose the largest format. Once you do, select a render. Now, before I actually render this out, there's a few things I want to adjust real quickly. Think about how this visor is actually sitting in my 3D workspace. It wouldn't actually sit up on end like this. So before I do my renderings, I'm going to go back to the design workspace. I'm going to select all the components involved in my model, and I'm going to set a pivot point and rotate my model 
so that it appears to be sitting on a surface the way it would in real life. Now I can go back to the rendering workspace and you can see this looks a lot better. So now I'm gonna rotate around until I get a nice three quarter view where I get some of those highlights popping off the visor. I'm gonna open up my environment or my setup again and switch my environment to a grid light. I'm just looking for the light source that I think looks best or most realistic for this device. So I'm gonna change the position of the light source where I get a nice balance of reflection versus just the glass. Fill the frame as if you were taking a picture. If you need negative space, think of that now. And then go back to render. Select the format that you want. Select the render button. This will now be loading in the cloud. So you know that this will be done when you open up your rendering gallery. Now, as it's processing, you'll see this little clock. This means it's still loading. But if it's completed, you'll get these nice little thumbnails and you can select through all of your renderings. I would recommend doing several. That way, as you're waiting, you don't have to wait 10 minutes only to realize that you had a bad setup. Select this little button to download your image. I prefer a PNG format. Change the name and select your file location for it to download. You also have this option as you're saving to choose a transparent background, which is really ideal if you plan on just placing your object onto a larger graphic. None of the background colors will be included and you don't have to worry about masking anything out. Another great option is if you select this 3D viewer, you can actually render out a turntable or a little animation of your object in a rendered format. Now, 26 frames would be ideal, but you do have to have a professional version of Fusion. You still get six free frames with the educational license. So what this looks like is a 360 rotation of your object with all of the rendering settings still applied. Now you know how to create beautiful renderings for multimedia graphics and presentations. Music